I, I, look, I, you know, I've had a crazy day. I'm kind of thinking about talking about my crazy day. Because, you know, yeah, I think it was a few weeks ago that people started to be a little, like, rude to me, kind of. And I said that I kind of don't like being pushed around. And I am contemplating not keeping my peace. But we'll see. We'll see. You know, I, I mean, you don't want to hear about my problems, but the, the, th the thing is this. I would only share my problems with you. I mean, you know, people being unethical, maybe illegally so, but very small, not that big of a deal. Um, I, I mean, you know, as, as Oliver Warbuck said in Annie, uh, he was talking about his helicopter and he was talking to the president and he said, it's called an autocopter. I mean, what, hold on, I have, to, <clears throat> I have to get into character here. I have to get into character. Oliver Warbucks. Now realize, rich businessmen, well, any people in that era had this way of talking. It was how they talked. It wasn't how all rich people necessarily talk. It was how anyone talked if he wanted to be rich and powerful. And people would actually talk that way to their friends. Like, they would do this. And that was how radio people were supposed to talk. So he gets to the president. Oh, they call it an autocopter. It doesn't need a runway, only a backyard. They say it can land on a dime. Whatever that is, <laughs> which is the, you know, the, the classic rich man, I'm rich. I mean, even though earlier he said that he grew up in England poor. Um, so, I, you know, don't sweat the little things, you know. So, unless something's really a problem, I won't, you know, go berserk about it. But, if I'm having a personal problem and it illustrates something unethical... Like, and there's a bigger thing that could be solved by me telling people. It's like, I'm, I'm okay, but let's, like, solve this for everybody because other people might not be okay. Well, then I might share it. But we're not to that point. And, uh, you know, I, I smile. You know, there's something about smiling. There's something about people that don't give bad news all the time, you know? Okay. You know... Before I get to this, I, I should probably tell you, I, I was right. I finished Watch, Stay, and Pray 365. It's done. The book is done. Formatting for Amazon.com, print-on-demand is almost complete. 365 positive, pithy, heart-probing, biblical reads, moral motivationals. Every one has exactly 365 words. I mean, this is 133,000 words that I wrote within five months and I, well, just over five months, just over five months. And I took a month and a half off to create my own Linux teaching curriculum and my own handwriting cursive curriculum. So technically I wrote 365 of these, 365 words each in 3.65 months. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. But uh, it's available. Watch, stand, pray, all on word.com. 365 and, and they're there. Books coming. I mean, you need to have positive ideas going into you every day, right? So if you're doing, you know, business minded, upper mobile minded, want to be productive minded and biblical, or you want to get some new biblical ideas, something you want, you want a, a, a biblical business, whatever type of ish, uh, focused life. And I, I say business, I mean more self-help stuff, but I, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to step on hundred dollar MBA, uh, M, 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 B, A. I'm not going to, I mean, there are people that teach business, but. It's a great, it's great. I, I think if you subscribe to the $100 MBA, I think that you need, uh, you need that book. You need 365 on, on right next to your, it's, it's short, quick reads to make sure I, good ideas are going into you every day. So hopefully that'll be on print on demand within a day or two. Most of the formatting is done, but the text is done. You can read it at watchdampray.com. Still have to add Bible verses and edit it, but I'm so happy. But as I was writing, um, for the, the Pacific Daily Times today, I, I use the word hiney to be cute. You know, your hind end. And I, I discovered this from the freedictionary.com, redirected from hiney, buttocks, B-U-T-T-O-C-K-S. It is plural. A buttock <laughs> is either of the two rounded prominences on the human torso that are posterior to the hips and form 
Oh dear. Uh, from um, underlying uh, structure, it says. I, 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 it's something there. I, I, I don't. I'm not interested in plagiarizing, but the free dictionary.com, I'll tell you what, I love you. Look up Heine, H I N E Y, Heine. It'll take you to the word buttocks, B U T T O C K S, which you can probably also find. Prominences. So, in case you never knew, those two rounded things on your rear are called prominences. So, if, if you need to refer to the rear, you can say, Are you looking at my prominence? <laughs> or my prominences? Is prominence? George is prominence, plural. Oh, that's right. I've got to hurry up and get to this before we run out of time. Um, <clears throat> you know, you know what? I, it occurred to me this week. Before I get there, it occurred to me this week. I, I, no, 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 no. Tra 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 track with me here. Speakers who ramble. I, I, I've been listening to people talk on YouTube and stuff. And, and there are people that, that, that ramble when they talk. And I don't, I don't mean a, a show business uh, changing the style of your voice and so forth. And, and, and look, Zach, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, stop trying to sound like Rush Limbaugh. No, 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 no. People have been modifying their voices in front of the microphone for a long time. It's not only Rush Limbaugh. You, the, the, the Zach, listen to somebody other than Rush Limbaugh. Uh, so I'll get to Zach in a minute. Hopefully less. But... Um, when, when people kind of ramble like they're bad speakers, it's because they don't practice much. They don't practice talking. They might give a monologue once a week and that's it. They might, they might, uh, uh, you know, do a rehearsal and then do two sermons as a pastor, but that's a monologue and that's it. It's, it's the same people every week. So when, when you do a lot of writing, I mean, once Watch, Stand, Pray comes out, 365, Watch, Stand, Pray 365, once that's available in print, I will have... Uh, well over 600,000, maybe 700,000 words available in print. I mean, right now I've got half a million words in print. And when you use that many words and you read many of them every week and you do it, do it, do it, your ability to talk and write words increases. So people who ramble haven't done their talking practice. Just so you know. Um, doing something regularly. I say this often, again and again, you've got to be regular. When we, uh, I, I, I have friends, I love them, you know who you are, I love you guys, Mwah. you say you want to write, but you don't do it every week, and it's hard, you know, you do other stuff, I know you guys, you do really good at other stuff, I wish I did other stuff more regularly, but writing and talking is something that I do regularly, some people think I talk a lot, but I was talking with Zach this week. Zach's one of my buddies. And Zach said, Jesse, stop trying to sound like Rush Limbaugh. Okay, I want to talk about this. If, I, if you send me a comment, I'll, I'll respond to it. I we talked about getting Zach on. Zach said, Jesse, once you said, I lived in Asia 10 years and this, uh, I have something to say about that. Um, he said, I'd love to hear whatever you think about culture. So I'm thinking about doing that. It might be a separate podcast. It would still be available through this. I would try to listen in iTunes for convenience, but you can use iTunes to listen to the podcast, not listen in iTunes, such as the Rush Limbaugh show. But um, talking with Zach, doing interviews, I'm thinking about getting into more of those. But about Rush Limbaugh, there is... A, a standard of radio style. And like I say, in the 40s, Oliver Warbucks talks like people did on the radio in the 40s. And there is a style today. And Limbaugh is a big inventor of syndicated radio. I've tried to follow that standard, but maybe I try to be like Rush in a lot of ways. But as far as the way that I talk, changing voice, watching different things, talking in different tones, to insert parentheticals, that helps keep attention and that helps retain an audience. And it's very important to do that. So, you know, content, what do you talk about? I'm not going to talk about my problems unless you need to know that, uh, you know, for some reason. There's all kinds of reasons for uh, different styles and whatever. But I am thinking about getting some other podcasts coming and talking about what I might do in Asia. And, oh my, I'm not going to get to it after all. 